of the slides and a blues backing track and also a PV certificate. So we're going to do all of that. All right, so if there's anyone there that doesn't know um, Phil and I, we are music educators and musicians and performers and composers. And yes, we are husband and wife. I, uh, I talked about this last week. Sometimes we do, uh, you know, workshops with teachers and uh, you can see that their mind is ticking over and, you know, sort of 30 minutes at, or, you know, 60 minutes into the workshop, they're really thinking, hang on a second, are they husband and wife? Are they, a t are they kind of together? Well, yes, we are. I'll just say that right from the outset. Um, we have been together for it. We had our 30th anniversary um, last year. So it's been a while. It's been a real adventure. Um, we have three kids between us. We're a, a kind of a blended family, step family. And we have a business called Welcome to Music, building confidence and creativity through music. And our goal is to enrich lives through the joy of music. Whatever we do, that's, that's what... That's what our goal is. Our goals for tonight. So we're going to just briefly look at how the brain works, very briefly. Uh, what is a 12-bar blues? What is a blues? Call and response technique. We're going to talk about that. We're going to look at how we can easily rewrite the words for the blues and encourage our kids to do that. Uh, we're going to look at some body percussion, um, doing some movement because this is a whole body approach that we are using tonight. So even if you are not face to face with your kids, and I know in different states, some of you have even gone back already. And in Victoria, we're one of the last states, I think Victoria and Tasmania will be fully back in four weeks. So we will be face to face, but in the meantime, it's still really important to do these activities, even um, if it's online or find videos where the kids can participate through whole body learning. We're going to talk about uh, one, four, five progression, 12 bar blues, um, look at an easy baseline, um, chords, and how to play the chords on the ukulele. Wow. Okay, we've got lots to get through. So. Um, they're the goals for the second part, which will be next week. And guys, um, I really believe, those that know me, you know that I really believe in inclusion and accessibility and that everybody um, can do this. So don't kind of think that, you know, it might be above your head or anything like that. Um, I really believe that you can all come and do part two, uh, regardless of your background. All right. So... What helps the brain work? A whole body approach. So moving is one of the most important things that we can do to get our brain firing and working. Children need to be moving, okay? Now there's heaps and heaps of research all over the place about this. We need to use a multi-sensory approach. So lots of visual activities, um, using the ears, using the eyes, and using the body through kinesthetic activity. Okay, so all of those sensory experiences are vital. Multimedia learning, multimodal, sorry, multimodal learning. Um, so all kinds of different ways in for the children through games, rhymes, songs, drama, instruments, movement, um, visual cues, art and crafts, dance. Think of just lots and lots of different ways in. And social learning, now this is a bit of a funny one to put here, uh, particularly uh, given COVID-19. But I really do believe that we can still do social learning even online. And there's lots of ways that we can do that and we can work, um, you know, there's uh, the meeting rooms that you can go to in Zoom. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can still work together. And that's really, really important, the social learning aspect. All right, so what is a blues? It's a type of slow and sad American Negro song. And it's widely known um, around the beginning of the 20th century. It means depressed and unhappy. And there's, there's a lot more to it than that. That's a very brief definition. A 12-bar blues is a popular musical form and it's used in literally thousands of songs. And it is a 12-bar sequence 
and it's a particular sequence. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, we're going to go through that tonight. All right, so we've got the ISO Blues. That's the song that we're going to use tonight. And I am going to switch off the slideshow in a moment. So we'll come back to that. I'm going to demonstrate all of this. And I'm going to go through this teaching process. So what I, what I suggest is that later on, I can see someone getting a nice cuppa. <laughs> is that you, Sue? <laughs> I'm thinking, yes, yeah, you've got your cuppa. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you're nice and comfortable. So I suggest you come back uh, and revisit the slides, you know, in a couple of days and have a look at the teaching process because really you can, you can develop this into a whole suite of lessons. All right, let's stop the screen share. Now practice doing this. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. Ah, here we go. All right. Just put your thumbs up, guys, if the sound's okay. I can see someone. Yeah, great. All right. And you can see it all. All right. Thumbs up for me. Great. All right. So we're going to start off with a call and response technique. This technique has been around for a long, long time. And it is a fabulous technique because it's instant success. It means that the students are involved in the experience from the outset and they feel like They've just had to learn one really simple thing and then they're involved in the entire song without very much learning involved initially, initially. So we start off very simply and then we're going to build, build, build. So we're actually ending up with something that's very complex. All right, so the words are no good news. I got the ISO blues. Now, did I mention to you, those that were on last week, you know we're going to do some... Uh, participation very important so I want to see you I can see all your little thumbnails I want to see you um, doing this with me so we've got some body percussion to add to no good news I got the ice so blues can you do that with me off we go and no good news I got the ice so blues fantastic this time we're going to sing it no good news I got the ice so Fantastic. I'm going to sing the calls. I want you to respond with the response. Okay, body percussion and singing. Here we go. My head is a mess. I can't get it. I got the ISO blues, face box boring and my old man snoring. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Fantastic. All right, that's a verse. We've got two verses and then we've got a chorus. I want you to do the same thing. I'm not going to play this time, I'm just going to sing it. And I've got some movements that I'm going to add. Really, really simple. Okay, watch the movements. So the idea with the call and response is... You're watching me do the calls while you're doing the response. And then you're going to join me in the calls and the response. Okay? Shuffle to the left, shuffle to the right. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Shimmy to the front, shimmy to the back. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Slide and turn around, let your feet touch the ground. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Okay? So, really quite simple. We shuffle to the left, we shuffle to the right, we shimmy to the front, shimmy to the back, slide and turn around, let your feet touch the ground. Okay, for the chorus. So the children, students learn that really, really quickly. 
um, you know, sometimes you get a little bit of rolling of the eyes, the older that they are, because are you got to be kidding? You want me to dance? You want me to move? But yes, we do. And, you know, they know that they're going to play instruments or they're going to do all kinds of other um, <laughs> exciting things um, afterwards. So, uh, call and response. So we've got the verse 1, verse 2 and then the chorus. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more things while you've um, got me um, before I share the screen again. So... I'm now going to introduce some hand signs and some solfa. I did this last week. I'm going to do just a, a little bit slower for those people that maybe haven't ever done this before. So we've got... We've got do. Okay, so I want you to make a do with me. And you can see it's just fists. Okay. Fa. Now, you, it's a fist with thumbs down. Fa. You've got so. And to the kids I say, it's, it's a fence. So. La. Fingers down like that. So there's those four different hand signs that we're learning. Do. Fa. So. La. Okay. Now. Your response this time is not the words and it's not the body percussion, but it's these hand signs and you're going to be singing. Do, 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 so, la, so, do, do, do. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit so it's in time. Do, 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 so, la, so, do, do, do. This is a bit tricky because it's fast. Even if you just do so, la, so, do, do, do. So you do the do. But just do it with your fingers. So la, so do, 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 which is absolutely fine. I'm going to do something else for the calls. Watch my calls and I want you to do the response. Here we go. Do, 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 fa, 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 everyone. Do, 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 so la, so do, do, do. Me, fa, 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 fa. Do, 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 so la, so do, 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 so, 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 fa, 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 you, do, 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 so la, so do, do, do. Okay, I can see some people doing it with me. Fantastic. Have a go, all right? I know many of you already know this. All right, so let's do my part, the call, and your part. Remember, every single time after the call, it has the same response. The response is always the same. The call is different. That's what a call and response is. It's different to question and answer. In question and answer, the question is different. The answer is different each time. Okay, make sense? Mm. Here we go. You're going to do it with me. A one, two, three, and do, 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 fa, fa, fa. Do, 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 so la, so do, 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 fa, 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 do, 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 so la, so do, 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 so, 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 fa, 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 do, 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 so la, so do, do, do. Fantastic. Now you can see if you haven't done hand signs before, it's a fantastic tool because it shows exactly where the pitch is going. Starts high goes down low, comes up one step, comes up one step, and there's a little leap back to do. Okay? So it's a super tool to use to go from speech to singing, body percussion, to we're still doing this kinesthetic activity. It's body movements. It's showing, it's reading off your hands, and then you are preparing students to transfer to instruments. Now, some of you are thinking, ah, it's COVID-19. And yes, not every student has an instrument with them at home. So, it's really important, ask them to find some things at home. So I found one of our stools. So I'm gonna go and grab my stool.
Okay, so we're now going to learn a drum part. So we just did the hand signs and that's going to transfer to a bass part. Okay, we're going to come back to that. This is going to be the drum part. All right, so I've got a stool and I've, I've just thought of things, you know, something that you can find at home. So, you know, stool, a chair, um, a bucket, okay? So, you know, look in the garage, look in the kitchen, there's heaps of things you can find. And basically what you're wanting the students to find, you want them to experiment with different sorts of sounds. Now, this stool actually has some different sounds and I hope you can hear. I'll just put the microphone down a little bit. I'm also going to put the tambourine here just to give another really um, different timbre. And so I'm going to find five different kinds of sounds. So I can experiment and find some different sounds. For the response this time, we're going to go back to the rhythm. So, no good news, I got the ISO blue. So, we've still got the clapping part that transfers to the sticks, the chest part that transfers to the tambourine. So, can you see that we're starting with the simple elements and we're scaffolding the learning, building, building, until we've got something quite complex. And each layer is transferring from one thing to another. So we've got no good news, I got the ISO blues. That's what I would start with and demonstrate that. Now we're going to learn another part that goes like this. This is the rhythm. Yada ba da 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 ba no good news, I got the ISO blues. Yada ba da 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 ba no good news, I got the ISO blues. Yada ba da 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 ba no good news, I got the ISO blues. Now that Da da ba da ba da ba da is a swing rhythm that you can easily transfer to a drum kit or any kind of percussion instruments. So I'm just going to put that little rhythm pattern on different kinds of sounds on the stool. And then for the call and then the response, no good news, I got the ISO blues. All right, let's see how we go. A one, a two, a one, two. Ba da 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 ba no good news I got the ISO blues I'm going to sing the melody um, sing it with me and put this rhythm as an accompaniment let's see how we go <laughs> oh one two three da da ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba da ba no good news I got the ISO blues da ba da ba da ba no good news, I got the ISO blues. But up, but up, but up, but up, but up, but up, but no good news, I got the ISO blues, and so on. So that takes time to develop. And that's why the call and response technique is so super fantastic. All right. Just put this. So while I'm here, and before I go back to the screen share, I'm going to just show you some things on the keyboard. So we've done a bass part and we've done a percussion part, and they can both be transferred to instruments if students have instruments, and particularly when you go back to face-to-face. -to -face. Um, and now we can do a harmony part with chords. So. This is going to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So we've got G chord, G, B, D is just a triad. You move it up to C, you move it up to D, and it's got the F sharp in the middle. All right. Now, in the left hand, I'm going to transfer what we've learned 
the hand signs and the solfa that we were singing to the left hand. So we've got, first of all, the response. No good news, I got the ISO blues each time. All right, I'm going to do it in the right hand as well. No good news, I got the ISO blues. And in the meantime, I'm going to put the calls in. Do, 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 so, so, so. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Fa, 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 fa. No good news, I got the ISO blues. So, 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 fa, fa, fa. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Now, you might be looking and thinking, well, you don't play the keyboard or your students don't play the keyboard. It's all very well to go do, fa and so, but what are the notes? So sing the notes. G, 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 C, 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 G, 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 D, E, D, G, 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 and so on. And that's what I would be doing. This is the process and it takes a number of lessons to get to this point. But, you know, we're talking middle year students, they can all do this. It's an inclusive approach and every student can do this. And at least parts of this. They will come to um, the various um, points when they are ready. Okay, so you've got some kids that will get it straight away, some kids that will take longer. But it's inclusive and the call and response part, it's accessible and it's inclusive. So right hand I'm going to add on the second and the fourth beat of the bar. So we've got... Response. 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 Okay, and then we can have kids playing different parts. They can be putting responses on the boom whackers, um, chimes. Uh, marimbas, xylophones, all kinds of percussion instruments, all right? Um, and this is the approach that I use in the classroom. So I've got, um, I'm saying that this is from grade three on because it depends on their background and experience, sort of year three to year eight. Um, and my whole approach is this very whole body multimodal approach. And I've got kids um, on the piano, I've got kids on the drum kit and whoever, you know, whoever wants to have a go. And I get them all having a go at all the different instruments. All right, so let's put both hands together. Sing along with me. Do the body percussion. Uh, choose one of the parts to do. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Da -ba -da -ba -da, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. No good news, I got the ice. Shuffle to the left, shuffle to the right. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Shimmy to the front, shimmy to the back. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Slide and turn around, let your feet touch the ground. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Fantastic, guys. All right, let's go back to the screen share. All right, let's see what we have covered. So we've scaffolded the learning. It's been whole body learning. So we've had the body percussion, we've had the singing, we've had the hand signs, um, we've had some playing of instruments, we've had movement and dance. Okay, saying, singing, moving, dancing, playing, creating. The creating part will be coming. That's also very, very important. So. The chorus is here. Shuffle to the left, shuffle to the right. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Shimmy to the front, etc. You've got the verse. My hair's a mess and I couldn't care less. Second verse, it's 10 a.m. just hanging around. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Now, can you see in the verses? Let's just have a look at how it's written. These are the wonderful words from my husband, Phil. <laughs> and it's just an example. Uh, so, 
how were your students feeling in isolation? So my hair's a mess, I couldn't care less. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Same thing repeated, second line. My hair's a mess and I couldn't care less. Response, no good news, I got the ISO blues. You need a third line. Facebook's boring and my old man's snoring. No good news, I got the ISO blues. Now, can you see that there's some rhyming going on here? My hair's a mess, I couldn't care less. You've got mess and less. Repeat, second line. So this is a formula that is used over and over again in thousands of songs. This is a formula, it's a great formula. Then third line, something different. Um, Facebook's boring and my old man's snoring. So boring and snoring. And the same with verse two. So they're the only things they have to know for the actual structure. So we're going into literacy, going into rhyming, um, making sense of something and uh, reporting on uh, something that they're feeling. And um, experiencing during isolation okay so then we want them to come up with their own lyrics all right so here's just some other examples of you know ideas and I think it's really important we need to give lots of ideas so students can't be creative in a vacuum they need ideas first so sentence starters anything like this all right and then they can send in to you their own lyrics, which is exciting. All right, we had some chair and stick and bucket. Well, we had um, stool, <laughs> chair, drumming. And uh, you can also use buckets. Um, if, if the kids are lucky enough to have some drumsticks at home, they could use those as well. And um, come up with their own rhythm pattern. So there's the one that we used. It looks really complex when it's written out because it's got that swing, okay? Um, and it's really good for them to learn this first and then they can come up with their own. If you've got kids that are learning the drums, um, it's fantastic to transfer to drum kit. Really great. Okay, so we're now gonna move on and we're gonna look at a one, four, five progression a form of a 12 bar blues, the bass line, and we're going to look at the chords. All right. So, first of all, a 1 4 5 progression, and it's in the key of G. So, the students need to know what the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're starting on G, and G is number one, and then it starts again A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We use Roman numerals um, when we talk about these progressions, these chord progressions. And so G is one. I've also colour coded it according to the chroma notes, um, boom whackers and chimes um, and other the glockenspiels, a lot of glockenspiels are in these colours. So number one, so A would be two, B would be three. So here we've got a little bit of maths, um, four for C and five for D. Okay, one, four, five. This is a really good way visually to show your students how they can work out the one, four, five in another key. So ask them, okay, if it was in the key of A, if it was in the key of C, in the key of D, work out what a one, four, five is. So this makes it really visual. All right, so this is another way of looking at this. So remember, multimodal learning, let's, let's look at different ways into learning so that our kids get it. They understand, they remember. All right, so uh, we've got G. Now, there's one little change I want you to make, and I should have changed this today. Uh, the second bar, so each of those colours represents a bar of four, four times. There's four beats in every bar. And that second bar where it says one, and it's green, I just want you to put four above in brackets. Okay, so in this blues, we've got one, second bar is four, then we've got the response which is one and one. Let me know in the chat box and let Phil know if this is all making sense. If you've got any questions at all, please ask. Then fifth bar is four chord, four chord. So there's two bars of the four chord, which in this instance is C. And then it goes back to the response one chord. Then you go to D 
and then C and then G. So remember, so I'm just going to play it and say it at the same time. So we've got G and then to C response which is one C C response which is one then we go to five four and back to one the response okay so three different chords on the piano is G C and D they're just really simple chords for the keyboard hope that makes sense let me know in fact, put your thumbs up if it's making sense so I can see at least. Yay, I can see some thumbs up. All right, fantastic. All right, so this is another way to represent the form of the 12 bar blues. There's one way. There's another way. And here's a third way. Kids need to learn all of these different ways. I really believe the more ways into learning and understanding and getting that brain working, the better. All right, so again, we've got G, C, which is four, back to one. We've got C, which is four, four, back to one. We've got five, D. C, four, back to one. And it repeats. So colour coding is a really another great way into getting the brain um, processing all of this. So colour coding is really, really good. Okay, multimodal learning. We've done some hand signs. So we had that kinesthetic experience. We used do, fa, so and la for the bass line. All right, so here is written out for you. The piano part is written out. And I would suggest to you, even if the kids haven't done any music notation, some of them will have, some of them won't have, depending on whether they're learning an instrument and whether you're doing it in the classroom, it's still a great thing to show them the music. This is what we've learned, but show them after they've had the experience. You've got to have that experience first before you have a look at the music. I am a firm believer of that, okay? Whatever you're doing, whatever instrument you're learning. All right, so it's written out in the left hand for the keyboard, the chords for the right hand, and then the response. So you can even see um, calls look different to the response. So it's a really good map, another really good map. Okay, so that's what the chords look like on a keyboard. Um, on, the, on the treble clef, G chord, C chord and D chord. There's the melody written out and again, show the kids. Okay, once they've had the experience, once they've sung it, once they've danced it, okay, you've put the backing track on, you've, you've done all of that, they've done their lyrics, let them see what the melody looks like. Next week, we're going to talk about how they can actually write their own melodies, and I'll get to that in, in a little bit. So some of you uh, will be familiar with the melody that I've been using tonight. It's a, it's a tune that Phil and I wrote some years ago, and it's actually the old shoe blues. I like to go dancing, twisting and shaking in my old worn out shoes. I got the old shoe blues. I like to go dancing, twisting and a shaking, and so on. So that's actually um, a piece on Sing, Jam and Jive. Um, and we've written some other blues. Uh, there's one called the Wet Day Blues on Razuma Jazz. And um, there's also some on our Black Belt ukulele books. Phil's to show you how you can play the chords on the ukulele. There they are on the slides. You can easily transfer it to the guitar and we'll come back to that. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, let's have a look at the ukulele. I'll hold it up a little bit so that you can see. Now, 
um, it's in the key of G, there's three chords. Now I'm going to change the chords a little bit for the ukulele, so it depends on what the instrument is. For the keyboard we've done G, C and D, so that's just the, the tonic triad the in root position and it's really easy to play. On the ukulele we do have a three finger chord for G, well, we're going to do C7, sounds really nice, and we're going to do D7. So I've put the chords up on the slides for you. Okay, now we are going to take some of the elements that we've learned through this multimodal and whole body learning approach and put them on the ukulele. So we've already done La ba ba da da ba da ba ba. No good news. I got the ISO blues, which is the rhythm for the response. So we're going to put that on the ukulele in the key of G. So just on the G chord. G G G G G G G G G. So I'm going to do that rhythm. Okay. The kids have been doing it. Um, they did it through body percussion. They've been singing that rhythm and so hopefully it's patterned into the ears and into the brain. So can you see that we're just building, scaffolding the learning so it goes, keeps going, keeps going. Alright, so even if it's just um, that's all they do. Now, not all of your students will know a G chord and um, that's not going to necessarily happen in the first lesson. All right, so you might have some students that do play the G chord. Um, otherwise, they could put it on another instrument. Um, xylophones, marimbas, glockenspiels. They may play the recorder. Okay, so many of you are teaching the recorder. Mm, G, 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 D, E, D, G, G, G. Those notes are the first notes that we teach usually. Um, so many of your students would be able to play that. Okay, so find something that they can do to have a successful experience. We want our kids to have successful musical experiences. Okay, so we're doing the response. No good news, I got the ISO blues. For the calls, we're just going to have a nice little simple strum. Sing it with me, do the body percussion. Let's just do, uh, let's do a chorus. Shuffle to the left, shuffle to the right. No good news, I got the ice so blues. Shimmy to the front, shimmy to the back. No good news, I got the ice so blues. Slide and turn around, let your feet touch the ground. No good news, I got the ice so blues. So remember that part can be split into two and the kids could just do the response. You could have others do the, um, the call. Of course that can be transferred onto the guitar and so you've got literally, you've got grades three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got them playing multiple instruments. It's a really exciting approach and we can only hope, fingers crossed, that um, we will be able to somehow work out how to do the social um, isolation and distancing thing <laughs> in our classrooms with instruments and all of that. Oh, who knows how it's going to work out. All right, so we are actually at the end, nearly, of our webinar. So let me just tell you about... Um, next week. So we're going to offer part two next week. And remember what I said, this is for absolutely everybody. Um, you don't have to have any particular background. So we're going to have a recap from part one. We're going to be looking at an alternative walking bass. So instead of just the do, 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 fa, 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 we're going to be walking. And we're going to be looking at a couple of different ways that we can do a walking bass, not just on the keyboard, xylophones, marimbas, of course bass instruments like bass guitars and so on. Uh, how to play along with the backing track, 
Blues Project, uh, we're going to be going into quite some detail on how to improvise rhythmically over a blues scale. We're going to be looking at the improvisation pot, how to improvise melodically over a blues scale, and we're going to look at scale fragments. It's a very simple and um, great way of uh, getting kids into improvisation. How to improvise over a la pentatonic scale how to compose your own blues melody, and how to extend this into garage band. Phew! <laughs> so, um, lots to cover. Um, and I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things that we're also offering that are free and live, um, particularly during this COVID-19 period. We want it to be of service and... So um, we're now up to, I think this will be number four this week, um, our Kids Corner. This is for little kids up to about six, seven-year-olds. We're doing a 30 minutes um, music class, singing, saying, moving, dancing, playing. Um, and it's on our Welcome to Music Facebook page. So, um, you know, would love you to come along to that. We're actually thinking of changing it to a Saturday morning. We might um, do that as of the following week. Uh, but just um, if you go to our Welcome to Music uh, Facebook page and just like that, you can keep in touch with us and we'll let you know. And uh, we're also offering Sunday sessions, which has been a lot of fun and I know some of you have come along to that. And uh, Sunday sessions where we do a whole range of songs. It's for the whole family. It's for an hour. We have a special guest and you can come along and listen and sing along and clap along and it's a bit of fun. Um, so we'd love to see you there. Okay, there um, are some of our contacts. Uh, we've been busy doing lots of videos, particularly putting things on our YouTube channel. So check that out. We'd love you to subscribe to that. Okay, guys. Um, this is a time to answer any questions or um, even if you have any comments <coughs> and feedback. Um, would love to know... Um, whether that was useful and valuable. So okay, let's have a look. So I love the multimodal presentation. The challenge will be when we go back to face-to-face -face learning with the sharing or not sharing the instruments. And that is a huge thing. And I really, like all of you, we just don't know how that's going to go. Some of you have gone back already. Maybe um, you can let us know how you're going with the instruments. Thank you, Louise. A massive thank you. Very useful. Lots of dreaming for me to use in classroom as I love. have gone back. And um, how are you going with the instruments? That is going to be our big challenge for sure. Big challenge. Um, Louise, I feel recorders will be a no-no with parents. That's very interesting. What's your trick for introducing instruments into the classroom? That's a great question. And in fact... What I've just done tonight is how I introduce instruments. And we're talking tonight about the middle years. Um, I, this is a very different uh, thing for little kids. And we can have another webinar on um, early childhood and introducing instruments to early childhood. But certainly with middle years, this is the way that I introduce instruments. The kids learn to sing the piece first. They learn to do, put movements and dance and there's that whole, it's the visual, the oral and the kinesthetic. And all of that's happening. And then we are learning each part and we are transferring it to the instruments. We sing the parts and we go on to instruments. We move to the rhythm of the, of the different parts and we, go and we transfer to instruments. This for me has been the, just the most amazing way to learn instruments. And that's how I teach. So thank you for that question. Uh, from Annie, really helpful. We are back at school and we'll be trying this. Oh, I didn't realise that Taz was back at school. I thought they were the same as Victoria. Uh, I am wiping all instruments of students' use after use. Also, students are washing hands before class. Okay, well, that's really good. Thank you, Annie. Um, from Karen. And it says Island. Wow. Loved it and enjoyed the use of Coo and Hand Science. Multimodal learning with lots of visuals. Movement is so important. Thank you. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much again for um, being on and Phil's just coming here.
Let thank you, of course, everyone. And thanks for, for watching and listening. And I think, um, and thanks, Sue, for your feedback, pardon the pun, we finally got the sound working, I hope. It sounded pretty good from where I was, and Sue said oh, it sounded good Oh, thank goodness. Good thank so, goodness. Uh, we'll get all the gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> but we got there. Now, someone asked about seeing the ute chords again, but, of course, we're going to send everyone the notes. We're going to send you the notes, so you'll get the, um, the chord diagrams. You'll get the chord diagrams that I've put in um, to that. And, guys, give me some feedback in terms of, and I put this on our Welcome to Music Facebook page just in the last couple of days, what do you want? What kind of topics do you want for webinars? So I've already got some ideas, but you might like um, a ukulele one. I, I did a, ukulele, a couple of ukulele ones um, maybe two years ago. Happy to do them again. Let us know what topics you would like. Yeah, put, it in, put it in the chat. And apology to, uh, <laughs> to Karen. She is in Ireland. She's having breakfast and coffee right now. To be sure, to be sure. Oh, there you go. I was <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, and uh, Jessica has said, thanks. You've added some new tools to my bag of tricks and helped affirm many of the things I'm already doing when I teach the blues. Looking forward to next week and improvisation as I've not managed to successfully teach that before. Okay, so really um, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you all again uh, next week. Uh, same time, same place. I'm going to assume, if, I, if you're not saying <laughs> anything, I'm going to assume you're all going to be here next Wednesday night at 7.10 p.m. Yeah, you don't need to re-register. Um, we'll send th we'll send the link to you all. We'll send you a link, and we're going to send you the notes and uh, backing track. The backing track that you. And that then after have. next week, you'll get the certificate as and, well. And hopefully the recording, if it all works out. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for Mark. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for being on. Have a good night. Bye.